You guessed it, I don't want to pick up, new project, new car. And uh, my thumbnail, you already know, it's a four-door Corvette Z06, AKA Cadillac CTSV. More specifically, a Gen 1 CTSV. And uh, we'll get into a little bit more about what that is once we pick the car up. But look, first, a little bit of background on, uh, on uh, how I found the car. So, um, driving up to my parents last fall, and uh, they live about an hour north of me, and on the road to their house, I saw, I think it's a rental property, it had this blue Cadillac CTSV. I immediately recognized it as a CTSV, as most car guys would. It seemed to be sitting outside, there was a bunch of, uh, first of all, it had mass plates, Massachusetts plates, which, you know, not the not unheard of, but it was a little bit strange that it was just kind of sitting there. It had pine needles all over the windshield. Looked like it'd been sitting for a little bit. It kind of piqued my curiosity. Uh, didn't didn't inquire about it back then. You know, got sidetracked with other stuff. Long story short, the entire winter went by, and uh, you know, I, I didn't do anything about it. I I, had, I didn't go up there very much. Um, so this past weekend finally went up there again and it was the first thing on my mind you know as soon as I had planned this trip was man if that Cadillac is still there I'm gonna go knock on the door and see what the deal is you know first of all I didn't think it was gonna be there anymore I figured maybe someone else has already scooped it up or uh, you know we've all been there before it just happened to me earlier this week with another car you get the old oh it's not for sale I'm gonna fix it up one day and uh, you continue to see it rot for another five years until it's worth nothing so We've all been there. So those were my two, you know, possibilities or two scenarios that I was afraid of. But luckily for me, knocked on the door. Uh, guy was super nice. He said, yeah, I'm interested in, I would be interested in selling it. Um, as you would guess, because it's been sitting there, it's got, you know, a problem. Um, and, and we'll get into that as well. Um, so yeah, we got some cash, we got the trailer hooked up. Uh, we're heading up there now. We're gonna scoop this thing up and, uh, yeah, we'll check in with you guys there. All right, guys, here we are. There she sits. Let's uh, get parked here, go talk to the owner. Well, boys, we got her. And there's where she was parked, just on the side there, covered in you know pine needles and whatnot. Headed home. So yeah, if you see that car on the side of the road, even though it hurts when the guy or girl says, not for sale, there's always that chance that they will say, yes, I will sell it. So shout out to Dan for saying yes. Let's get this CTSV home. All right, well, we made it home with the CTSV. 
It's about a week and a half later. Been busy, you know, how it goes. Here she is, still on the trailer, parked out back. So, yeah. This is the unit right here. 2005 Cadillac CTSV. Uh, so those of you guys that are familiar with the chassis know that this has the LS6. And if you can see here, six-speed manual, T56. So let's do a quick walk around of the car. So you guys saw uh, it was parked kind of abandoned uh, on the end of this road that I drove by for about six months. Finally decided to inquire, and uh, the guy said he would sell it. Um, he said it had some sort of clunk, you know, when he pushed the clutch in. I know these things are known for uh, the rear differential bushings going bad, so that might be what it is. Uh, it's got a cam, long tubes, um, you know, mufflers, a couple other things, but, but yeah, overall really straight car, you know, it's really dirty. It's been sitting outside for six months. Need some paint on the door handle, some black there, small dent there. Uh, the rear bumper is going to need to be resprayed. It's got clear coat failure. Other than that, really straight, really nice. You know, I think it'll clean up nice. It'll be nice to get it off the trailer and, and see what we're dealing with, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. But the battery is so dead, as you probably saw in the video, we had to winch it onto the trailer. Can't even read the mileage. I haven't even heard this thing run in person. The guy sent me a video after, you know, AAA came and jumped it, sent me a video of it running, and I was like, whatever, dude, that's good enough. For what I paid for this thing, probably the cheapest CTSV in the country, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Even if it wasn't running, I would have paid what he was asking or what I offered him for the car. He didn't, you know, we, he basically said, give me an offer and, and that's what we settled on. So, um, yeah, like I said, this has been here about a week, uh, needs a battery, I bought a battery, bought an oil change. So here's our plan of action. Put the battery in it, see if it starts. If it runs, we'll get it off the trailer, get it in the garage and change the oil and, uh, start seeing what it needs. Um, I did check the oil before I bought it. It's pretty dirty. But, you know, I did, like I said, I did hear a video of the car running. It sounds healthy, like a healthy LS. Um, but I have not heard this thing run in person yet. So let's toss a battery in it, see if it runs. If it does, get it off the trailer, and uh, we'll go from there. Right tool for the job. Oh yeah, round it off. Torque to spec. All right, super start premium installed. Got our key. Let's uh, let's double check the oil one more time, and then we'll see what happens with this thing. Oh yeah, there's oil in there. Let's see what happens. Already got the stuff for our oil change in here. Take this out for now. Get you guys situated for the cold start from the back. There you go. Let me know how it is. All right. Well, we got a flashing light. That's a good sign, I guess, to go through all this stuff. A bunch of spare parts in this thing we'll go through later, but. Alright, I heard a fuel pump. Caddy. The finest navigation system from 2005 starting up. Service stability system. Yeah, we'll get right on that. Alright, we're in neutral. Here goes nothing. Wow. Fires right up. Idling a little bit low. That 
was weird. Shut it off, ran better, and then shut off. So I'll prime the fuel pump again and see what happens. Sounds healthy with that cam. I like that. Hmm. Let's try a little bit of throttle. Like the motor's got good oil pressure. I don't hear any unhappy lifters or anything. All right, a little bit of gas. We're off the gas now. Seems to be idling just fine. Let the clutch out. Let's go check it out. Put this down so we don't get locked out. Well, at least the driver's window works. That sounds good. Sounds healthy. Sounds like every other LS I've ever owned. Let's go hear it from the back. Oh yeah. I think she's got flow masters on her. Rusty ones at that, but we might have to make it a little bit louder. This is actually kind of quiet. Definitely got a healthy cam though. out get this thing off the trailer and see if we can see what else we got to work on this clunk or problem with the clutch whatever let's get it off the trailer 82,975 miles looks like the temps coming up no check engine light or anything I have the parking brake on so let's see not a single warning light Got our sunroof here. I'm scared to try that, but we'll do it in a minute. Headlamps, you know. We'll go through all this stuff. Let's get this thing off the trailer, give it a rev, actually, let's see how it sounds. Oh yeah. I think we gotta get this oil changed, probably get some fresh gas in this thing eventually, but uh, let's get off the trailer. Let's see if she'll go into gear. It's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, there's reverse. Let's see if it actually moves anywhere. We'll try first, first. Try not to go anywhere off the trailer. Oh yeah, we're moving. What about reverse? Oh yeah. I should probably hook back up to the truck before I tilt this thing backwards and we end up looking at the sky. So let me hook the trailer up to the truck and uh, get this thing off. One eternity later. Well, you guys can't already tell. An entire season has basically changed since we touched this car. You know, leaves are fully in, grass is green. It's been a month 
three, three, four weeks since I've touched this thing. And I'm sorry about that, but you know, living in New England and, and in the Northeast, when you, when springtime comes around, you realize all these things that need to be done around your house. And I got busy with house projects and you know, the Corvette, which we've got videos coming on the 69 Camaro, which we've got videos coming on, went through a whole process, polishing the paint on my truck which is hooked up to a dump trailer full of mulch in regards to the house projects we just talked about. So I've been busy is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, let's get back on the CTSV. Don't worry, you haven't missed a thing. It's sitting right here where we backed it off the trailer, the side of my garage. So I think we already did a quick walk around. So I think the first thing as always I'd like to do is, uh, you know, fire it up. Eventually we'll wash it, but first I'd like to get out all of this stuff. I mean, some of this stuff is what I've already bought for the car, but you know, the tires and some of these other parts are what came with the car. I'd like to get those out. So let's uh, let's open up all the doors in the trunk, get all the stuff out. We'll go through it. Then we can fire this thing up, move the truck and uh, figure out what we're gonna do next. Coolant, look at all this. Coral purple, empty, Vaveline, some German brake fluid. Got some good fluids in here, we'll take that. Summit stickers, only have 917 of those already, but we'll take that. Power bait, not much of a fisherman, but that's it. So we got spare in here. I guess this is where the spare would go. I don't know if it's under this tub or what, but yeah, look at that later. All right, got the car all emptied out. Original owner's manual, navigation DVDs, all that good stuff. Reason I wanted to get these out is so that these, mar I knew these would be here. The tires sitting here, God knows how long. Hopefully we can get these to come out. Got the car sitting in the sun for a few days. Maybe some leather conditioner. Oh yeah, now we got the Yokohama edition leather seats. Those are rare. Anyways, so yeah. I don't know why he bought these. He said something about one of these rims is cracked, which you would assume means that the tire leaks, but this thing's been sitting here for a month now, and God knows how many months before that. And these things all look fine. So, and they all look like they have good tread too. And these are, these are Michelin Pilot Sport, or Pilot Cup, Super Sport, whatever. They're expensive. You check those out on Tire Rack, they're basically the most expensive tire you can buy in most cases. You know, standard on Corvettes and Vipers and things of that nature, so. I don't know why he has a brand new set of 19 inch Yokohamas here, but we'll take them. If we don't need them, we can definitely sell them and, and recoup some money, all four brand new. Got some uh, high performance stainless steel brake lines here. I thought he said some of them might already be on the car, so looks like there might be two in there. Uh, we'll, we'll check it out. We'll know more about what's actually done to this car once it's on the lift. These are, I believe, creative steel motor and or diff mounts. Again, I'll go through this in further detail, but like I said, if there is a diff problem, this might take care of it for us right here. And this is the stuff that I bought, just general tune-up stuff that I'd want to do anyways. Synthetic oil change, AC Delco filter. I bought a fuel filter. I have no idea where they are on this car, if they're even really replaceable, but it was cheap enough. I just bought it. I think it'll fit. This is a front wheel well liner. I noticed the one on the passenger side up there is missing. So this is stuff I've collected and just kind of tossed in here over the last month. Didn't get key fobs, so I bought a couple for the car. Now I just need to figure out how to program them to this car. So do that too. So that's it. So yeah, I think I'd like to pull this thing out, take it for a drive, see how it drives, if it drives, and uh, then uh, we'll, we'll probably wash it up and pull it in the garage and start getting to work on this thing. So let's hop in, fire it up, and go for a ride.
thing is not happy when it's cold than not running for basically two years other than getting it off the trailer but let's go take it down the road and see what happens You know a car has been sitting somewhere too long when it looks like that. You know, I was making fun of these guys that say they're not selling, they're gonna fix it up one day. I'm that guy. If someone came in right now and said, I've seen that CTSV sitting there for the last month, will you sell it? I'd be like, no, I'm gonna fix it up. And they'd probably drive away and be like, I hate that guy. Hypocrite. All right, well, adding to the value of this purchase, uh, the previous owner left me this nice dash mount for his phone, so it seems to work just fine for mine, so hopefully it's not too bouncy. You guys will have to let me know. Here we go. Well, we're in first gear. Adjust my seat a little bit. Out of state plates, been expired for two years, no insurance. Down the road. <laughs> There's second gear. I thought, <laughs> thought the transmission was crunchy, but it's I'm just crunching these fobs in the boot there. Third. And we're moving. Oh yeah, and I don't have my license. I feel like I've done this before. But anyways, yeah, the car seems to drive pretty good. I mean, we're cruising in fourth gear. Take it back. It appears the speedometer is not working. Battery voltage is good. Coolant temp is good so far. We haven't been going that long. Seems okay. Let's drive down the road a little more and uh, investigate further. We've gone through all the gears now, all six. They seem to be just fine. Um, trying to replicate this clunk that the owner was talking about. I haven't really been able to do it yet, but I think it would probably happen when you're taking up the slack in the drivetrain. Um, so we, we might be able to find a parking lot or something where we can try and do that. Alright, we're at a little spot. Let's uh, see if we can take the slack out of the drivetrain. First gear. Clutch engagement. Yeah, I can feel that. You guys may or may not be able to hear that. You hear that when I push the clutch back in, you hear some kind of lurch. Doesn't seem like a clutch problem. I'd be willing to bet that diff bushing is shot super common on these cars. Yeah, I can hear it back there. That's got to be it. I bet you we get under this car and uh, push on that diff and it moves around. But that'll be easy to see once it's up and lift. And let me grab second here so you guys can hear it. All right, so we're in first gear. I'm going to load the drivetrain up and then let off when we push the clutch in. You hear that? Oh. Now we're going over a bunch of bumps, but let's try it in second. Yeah, you guys won't be able to hear that, but it's most likely the diff. He told me he brought it to a shop and they couldn't figure it out, but it seems very well documented that the differential in these cars is not great. So we'll see what happens. Woo! That was pretty good. I mean, this thing has probably ancient fuel in it, so I didn't want to, you know, pull too hard on it, so. But yeah, it goes through all the gears great, seems to drive smooth, other than that clunk. So let's get it back to the house and come up with a plan, see what we're gonna tackle first. Brakes on this car, nice. I mean, I think it's got like four or six piston Brembos, just like, you know, a C6 or C5 would, so. For a big four-door sedan, it stops pretty nice. Not too bad for a car that's been sitting for a long time. Brakes feel good. I think we knocked most of the rust off the rotor. Probably need a few more stops. But yeah, car ran good. I just had it idling forever. No overheating. No check engine lights even. So we'll add the differential clunk. To the list as well as for some reason the speedometer is not working uh we'll look into that but um yeah i mean i think we're ready to get started so you guys know the deal let's let's wash this thing up pull it in 
and uh, I think while it's hot, we'll, we'll drop the oil, get some fresh oil in it, and uh, we'll go from there. guys quick change of plans um, not gonna wash the vehicle today it's got some very heavy sap on it that I think is gonna take some time to remove and I just don't have the time today it's got these sap spots all over it so I was gonna give it a quick wash but I kind of need to decide if I want to really start in the exterior now or just kind of get in the mechanicals first so for the purposes of this video let's put it up in the lift see what we're dealing with underneath and uh, hopefully finish out our list here all right let's see what we got under here Starting at the front, you guys on the west coast might be appalled, but this isn't great, but it's actually not too bad for a New England car. Just surface scaling, really. We could probably take care of that with some paint. I guess I'm missing the entire underpiece here. This wheel wall liner is there, but it's a little cut up, but I guess I need to order. I'm assuming there's a piece that goes here, too. This factory cooler, it looks like. eBay's finest. LEDs or HIDs, I guess. Neatly wired up there, so that's nice. I have to do something about that. Looks like we've got some sort of aftermarket poly bushing, Hotchkiss sway bar. I mean, what are those Prothane motor mounts way up there? Some sort of long tube headers. Super nice coilovers. What brand of those? K and W. Hmm. Okay. Long tube headers, I assume these are aftermarket high flow cats. Uh, we've got a TCI starter up there. Some sort of oil leak somewhere. I'll have to find out where that's coming from. Um, resonator. Floors look great. A little bit of stuff starting at the pinch wall back there. Uh, same thing with the subframe here. This will all clean up pretty good. Uh, same thing, coilovers back here. Looks like the diff already has a brace on it. I wonder, where's that bushing? I think it's up there. I wonder if we push on this thing. Ah, I might have to jack it up later, but looks like it could be shot. Probably is. Uh, another Hotchkiss sway bar back here. And this is the part that I want to do something about. These are these got to be like knockoff Flowmasters or something. Clearly didn't use stainless pipe. The pipes are rotted all to hell. And it's too quiet for me anyways. And I hate these exhaust tips. These are factory exhaust tips, but I hate them. So I think we're going to do a nice factory, or I'm sorry, a nice exhaust tip here. Nice stainless mufflers and stainless pipe to connect to the factory part here. So we'll add that to the list as well. I don't, I still don't understand why he need, thinks he needed tires. These are nice pilot sports. 
they all clearly hold air, all have good even wear, good tread. So we might be safe to sell those Yokohamas for a profit here. These all look really good. Interesting. He's got the stainless brake hoses up there. I wonder if the other ones are for the rear. No, those are stainless too. He said he used to track this car, which makes sense. All these modifications are pretty consistent with a tracked car. So, nice stuff though. So I think we know where we need to start. Let's go look at our list. So here it is, the CTSV list. Battery, done, put that in. Oil change, got the stuff to do that, and it's along with various other tune-up items. Got to do the wash. Uh, I need to program those key fobs I bought. The emblems are all faded. This happens a lot on these cars. And I think a fresh set of emblems would really do this thing more justice. So I want to get a set of those. Rear bumper needs resprayed. Got to figure out that starting issue. Why the speedometer doesn't work. The exhaust we just talked about. Interior is in good shape, but it needs a heavy detail just like most cars do. And the underside cleanup, which we just saw. I'm sure that we'll find more as we get farther into this thing, but uh, that's a really good starting point. Overall, really happy with this purchase. Um, we'll get into the purchase price and some other figures in another video. Um, but for what I paid, this thing runs and drives perfect, basically, with just a battery. Uh, I'm going to need to address that differential clunk. But these things are bringing anywhere from fifteen dollars to $25,000 right now, um, depending on mileage and condition. So I'm, I'm psyched where I'm at. Oh, yeah. Got to mention, Ford Star Wheels F14s. Um, they're going to need to be refinished so we can add that to the list, but you know, none of them appear to be bent. Not sure what he was talking about with the crack because none of them leak air. So, But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I really think you guys are going to enjoy this CTSV restoration process. Uh, really glad I found this car. Um, but if you haven't already, subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you think we should do with this car, any other things I should look for. You Gen 1 CTSV guys, feel free to chime in. Next video, we'll start diving into the mechanicals on this thing, as well as some of the cosmetics, and we'll just start chipping away at this list. More videos coming on the 69 Camaro, more videos coming on the Z06, so hope you guys are there for all that. Till then, see you next time.